Hi, Derek Mahoney, updating you on advances in modern orthodontic care. One of the big questions general practitioners ask me is, is it possible to prevent canines from impacting? And I always like to quote the research, in particular, this excellent research uh, by doctors uh, Ericsson and Kirol uh, from Sweden. Uh, what Ericsson and Kirol showed in this amazing paper is by simply removing maxillary deciduous canines at the appropriate age, you can deflect the pathway of the impacted canine. Now, if anyone's interested, I'm happy to send them this paper uh, because it explains it really well. I've been following this technique for many, many years and getting amazing results. For those who heard me lecture before, you know it's one of my pet favorites. And I make all my students actually assess the mixed dentition panoramic radiograph or OPG to look for canine position, right? So let me just um, uh, go through what this paper entails. Um, what Ericsson and Carroll did, they looked at 46 cases of ectopic canines uh, in 35 um, kids. They did just simply the extraction of the deciduous canine. And a few notes on that. If only one canine is ectopic, you can't just take out that deciduous canine because then you'll get a centerline shear. So what you have to do is take out both deciduous canines. And don't worry, in the upper arch, not the lower, but the upper arch, the D's and E's will not drift forward measly, so you don't need a spaceman tape. Let's talk about the zones and then I'll show you a, a case that we've done. This is on page 285. Uh, this is from the article that I'm going to send you from the European Journal of Orthodontics. So a good canine, an ideal canine, would erupt in zone one and it would be parallel to the occlusal plate. That's good. The worst canine would be in zone five, impacted at 90 degrees to the vertical, right? Canine angulation, which is, you know, if it's going to go this way or this way, and anything I find in clinical practice greater than 30 degrees is a high chance of impaction. The second thing we look at is where the tip of the canine is in relation to the other teeth. So what we're trying to do is act before we get into zone three. This uh, diagram is um, from page 288 of the article. And what they're showing is if you're not past that uh, zone three, you can get a 91% improvement. So the average of 80% is based on those two figures. But you know, 90% is really, really good if you consider what you're doing. Now, the only thing they suggest here is that you stay well away um, from situations where you already have root resorption on the lateral. The other thing that they uh, discussed here um, is that it's palatal canines they're talking about, right? Um, I'll give you more papers on labial canines. I'll give you more papers on mandibular canines. But this podcast is specifically to avoid the palatal impacted canine. Now, palatal impacted canines, they tend to be the most um, uh, difficult teeth for us to, uh, uh, to treat uh, at the best of times. I'm just showing you what I show a patient normal consultation. Uh, this is what happens to palatal impacted canines. It's years of orthodontics for the child. You've got to expose this tooth surgically, put a chain on it, pull it out of the palate. There's a high risk of absorbing the teeth as you do. So remember, there's an 80% chance of avoiding that if you just remove the deciduous canine at the appropriate age, right? So let's look at a typical scenario. Uh, this patient has had some space created. And by creating the space, we see our canines are in a favorable position. So I'm showing you this to show you what normal is, because after a lecture, everyone seems to think they have impacted canines. This is normal. Normal is canine is less than 20 degrees in eruption pathway. Canine is in zone one, right? So in a case like this, you don't need to remove the deciduous canines. Here, I'm just making space in my 2x4 degainer technique, right? So the summary is, please read this paper. Um, the follow-up paper I'll talk about is where they discuss age seven to nine as a good prevention zone, right? Um, but at this stage, I'd like you to look at a panorex and see if your canine is in zone one or not. See the angulation of the canine. Bad angulation, bad zone means early treatment. Looking at their research, 91% chance that you can avoid this if you're awake. 
as opposed to just saying, oh, well, we'll wait till 13, 14 and see why the canine hasn't erupted. At that age, you take a panorex and guess what? Canine is already in zone three, zone four, not a favorable outcome. So please follow what I have to say. If every general dentist in the world would just read this article, how many less impacted canines would we have? That's true preventive uh, orthodontics. So again, for Derek Mahoney, thanks for listening, and I'm happy to send you the articles, information, case studies. The more you learn, the better. Thanks.